Hey guys, welcome back. In our live stream last Saturday, somebody was asking about a shop tour. I think it was then. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick shop tour. We are in the office right now. Behind me, we have a couple of lazy boys. Uh, one extra chair. We just had our company uh, Christmas dinner, I guess. We let everyone out a little bit early, had some grub. Um, so we had some extra chairs sitting here. But because of the current conditions, we've been removing one chair. That way, all the chairs are spaced at least six feet apart. Although we prefer not to have waiters in the office anyways, it's inevitable. Um, we got some fishing poles and stuff on the wall. Uh, we had a light burnout, so we got to get that fixed um, on the to-do list for this long weekend. But I forgot to get bulbs, so it's probably not going to happen. I should probably tell you guys about the shop a little bit. My dad started the shop 2001, I believe. Um, he has worked as a mechanic in this town since the late 80s. Um, wanted to start his own shop, started his own shop in 2001. On the same premises, there was a two bay garage little shop. He grew it into what we have now. I think he built this shop in 2005. Um, we'll get out to the shop in just a second, but let me flip around. You guys don't need to look at me the whole time. So from a customer's point of view, we have two service riders. Um, the other stainless bench is outside. We put these in just to keep our customers a little bit further away, plus give them something to ride on. Um, and we disinfect those often throughout the day. But service rider one and number two, uh, my sister's working for us now. Um, Kevin's been working with us for a while over here. We have our ASE placards up on the wall there. Um, I just recertified a bunch of mine, so I'm gonna have to update that once I get the new uh, placard. And I don't know if we ever had pictures up there on the wall, but we may do that this year as well. We just added this desk in here. We took out some more file cabinets. Um, I don't know if we're getting rid of that one over there or not, but we might um, put something over here, the printer and stuff. And this is gonna be another computer station and an area for technicians to write up their work orders or jot stuff down when they're in the office if they're not doing it um, in the back of the shop. Customer restroom, and that is the entrance to my dad's office. Um, there's nothing to see in there but a desk and a computer. So that is the office. And we used to have, last winter we had the, you know, the clear shields up here. Uh, we took them down for the summertime because we have the doors open most of the time. Most people don't wait. Anyways, um, they may go back up just because, you know, things are getting worse again and uh, we don't want anyone yelling at us. Safety glasses required beyond this point. Make sure you have your safety squints on and activated. Here is a view of the back shop from the customer window or from the service rider window. I don't like when customers stand here. Um, they typically don't because they can't see a whole lot. Before we had this toolbox right here, um, they could see a little bit more, but still, they, they normally don't stand here and watch us. So don't mind the mess. Um, I'm not gonna dress it up for you guys. Um, this is just the condition that we left it after our party. Um, we told everyone just to take off. We would take care of the mess. We'll clean it up later this weekend. Um, there's the other stainless bench that goes in the office. This is our main shop entrance for technicians and parts delivery. We stock interstate batteries. We have parts shelves here, um, special you know, items up on top, stuff that's not coming in yet. We have a full Napa shelf. We have a half a shelf for CarQuest. We have Napa returns, I believe. Actually, this is Napa returns. CarQuest parts are over there. CarQuest returns down there. Um, anything like comes from O'Reilly's or AutoZone, they just drop it off at the counter. We don't use them very frequently. We have, you know, a stock of Blue Def. We don't keep it in bulk. Um, you know, that'll last us a month. We normally buy, you know, six or 10 cases at a time. Some more shelving for specialty stuff or long-term parts, or if we're collecting a bunch of parts for a vehicle that's not here, we'll put them in a bucket. There we go, sorry about the flicker. So my bay door, this, all the doors in here are 12 by 12, except for the one on the back wall over here. And it's like a eight by 10 or something, or an eight by eight. I'm not sure what that one is, but it's a lot narrower. Um, so the shop is 50 feet deep by 125 long. 
but the office space is 25 feet. So from this wall over to that wall is 100 feet. So the workshop area is 50 by 100, plus we have a nook over there, um, and I'll go over that here in a minute. Sorry to keep spinning around on you guys. The toolbox right here is shop toolbox. We have the shop scan tools. We have, you know, specialty items in the side cabinet. Um, a lot of European tools. Um, just ra random stuff that the shop owns. And then my bay has changed over the years. Um, it used to come through this door. And then I had a hoist right here in the center, um, bolted there and there, and then you could drive straight out the back. So if I pulled the engine or transmission out of something and we needed the rack, I could push it out the back door. That is no longer the case. We have more technicians now. So we split the bay in half. Um, so now we have to pull in at a slight angle to get into our bays. So before I had a rack, a flat bay over there and a flat bay where I'm standing. So I had three bays and then if no one was using it, I had a flat bay over here I could use as well, but sometimes that guy was using it and I didn't have access to it. So I had up to four flat bays in the shop. Um, now I was doing some work in the back corner. That's why all the equipment is pulled out. Let's kind of walk over here. We have employee restroom. We used to have a sink on the wall right here, um, but my dad broke it, um, caught it on the big bumper of something and cracked it. It was a plastic sink. So we put in this sure sink over here and it's a stainless steel sink. Um, we still need to patch up the wall down here and repaint. Um, back there we have an employee fridge. We have utility room. This used to be our repair information system, um, internet, where everyone could access all data, Mitchell, whatever they needed. Now I have computers at everybody's toolboxes, so this rarely ever gets used, um, if at all. We used to have folded rags, but our new rag company um, has bags of rags, so they don't stack on the shelf real nicely and they fall off. Um, so a few random things over here, and we have some hoses and more boxes of hoses up there. Um, we keep quite a bit of inventory of just random shop items, um, so you're not calling you know, the parts store for a foot of hose. Hose clamps, which I'm surprised they're that low on stock. They get stocked like twice a week, and <laughs> they seem pretty low at the moment. In this cabinet here, we have wire, um, lots of wire actually, just different types of wire. We have fuses, connectors, different types of fuses, heat shrink, and a connector assortment here. This is kind of a mess. Um, I've organized it in the past. It doesn't last long, and it looks like that again. We have other random stuff down here, battery cable stuff, trailer connectors. Um, I was working on the compressors. That's why all the equipment's pulled out of here and this area is still kind of a mess. Um, we have light bulbs. We keep those in stock. We have metric fine thread. And in the eight millimeter and 10 millimeter, I keep the JIS small head. So 14 millimeter head on the 10 millimeter stuff. 12 millimeter head on the 8x125 so that it matches all of our Japanese automobiles. Over here we have coarse thread metric and this also has the 13 millimeter, 8 millimeter, our 13 millimeter head, 8 millimeter by 125. So that'll match all the European and domestic stuff. Then over here we have SAE coarse thread. And then we have some more electrical stuff over there, some machine screws. We have small metric bolts, cotter pins, tech screws. I'm not sure what's in the bottom one. Um, license plate stuff, micro fuses, some push pins, some Christmas trees. We have Toyota Lexus, Ford Chrysler, GM, Honda, and Subaru um, push pin or body panel clips. We have Metropack connector, Deutz connectors, coated clamps, copper lugs, more Metropack over here. My battery terminal kit is underneath there. I keep the Nissan positive and negative battery cables in there because I like those the best. Um, helicoil sets and some pan head screws. Random electrical stuff like relays and harnesses. We have a junk shelf over here. 
exhaust clamps. Our equipment, a lot of our equipment used to fit underneath this shelf until I put this uh, exhaust clamp stuff in and this old battery tester. We have exhaust pipe on the wall and then we have two air compressors. Now, this was one of my projects that I was working on today. Um, we've had the Snap-on Big Red since we've opened. My dad bought that. Actually, I think before, before we went into the new building, he bought that. And it's been a very, very reliable unit. We had a couple of head gasket failures early on. They had an updated gasket set and air filter. We haven't had a problem since. We bought the Napa compressor a while back just as a, a spare or a backup. We had it wired in quite a bit ago. Now this wiring, we didn't run new wires over here. This is a selectable breaker, so you can only select one or the other. So we can keep the same amp service over here and just flip flop the power. Um, we don't need to run two at a time. It's just if one has a mechanical or electrical failure on the pump unit, we can flip the switch and let the other pump unit run. Um, I was plumbing in this one. It's been sitting here for years, but we've never plumbed it in. So I was doing some plumbing today, tying that into the system. I'm not going to leave this one as a reserve tank because what, if you do that, if you make a bigger reserve, once the pressure runs down and this has to kick on, it's gonna run for twice as long. Um, plus there's a leak at the bottom of the tank where the big bung goes in. So I'm gonna have to move this thing and try and reseal that anyways. Over here, we have antifreeze and our BG supplies, as well as some specialty tools. So we keep factory Toyota red and pink. We have Volkswagen G13, Subaru blue and green, Nissan blue, Honda blue, Dexcool, um, some random stuff. We have BMW there, Motocraft yellow, Motocraft gold, Mopar purple, um, some brake fluid and power steering fluid, and some other random stuff. Um, some of this stuff I pulled out from the shelves and just haven't put it back in. We have our hydraulic press and a workbench. Now this stuff used to be on the other end of the shop, you know, back over there, but my dad rearranged recently. Um, so we're going to try it over here. I want to get a wall hanger vacuum to keep the bench clean. Since it's over by my area, I don't want stuff getting left or a big mess over here. Um, so we still have to finish reassembling everything since we moved it. And then we have my mess of stuff over here. So I've got a bunch of electrical jumpers on the side of my box. Um, yeah, this is cranberry and that's candy apple. But the side cabinet was 500 bucks, so I couldn't pass it up. Um, this is how my stuff looks on a daily basis, pretty much. If I clean it off, it'll... It'll last a week before I have it looking like that again. Uh, but I do clean it off. <laughs> I got a, a stereo system I built years ago to fit on there. Um, there's just a 12 volt power supply up on top. Got my welding helmets. That sheepskin I throw on hood latches because otherwise it'll puncture my, uh, my fender cover. So that gives me a little extra padding when I'm working on a, a Ford diesel or something. And then we have my Arctic Silver, I believe it is, um, roll cabinet. These, this holds all of my daily tools that I use. Um, I don't have to jump into my toolbox, you know, more than three or four times a day. Um, everything I need is in there. I have a little diagnostic cart with my laptop and the Pico scope and some miscellaneous adapters. That's been kind of a mess lately as well. I haven't cleaned that out. Um, all of this equipment is normally backed by the compressor. Um, my Snap-on training jack, we have the battery charger from Snap-on that does the programming stuff. A dual machine R12-134, yeah, we still see R12. We still recover it. We do not charge it. We recover it um, if we're doing an upgrade or retrofit to 134. We have a 134 only machine and underneath that cover, we have the 1234YF machine. Um, this is my messy workbench. I built these workbenches, I don't know, five years ago, six, seven, I don't know. I don't know when. Um, we need a new workbenches. We were using the stainless steel benches like what you saw in the office, similar to that, but you can't beat on them. So I built these workbenches. Um, this one's actually a little wider than all the other ones. And 
I have my air hose reels uh, encapsulated in that unit there. I have two and a half gallon jugs of antifreeze. Um, I pour all my antifreeze into those and it's easier for me to use my suction filler or vacuum filler out of a big barrel. My especially big blown plastic boxes down there. Um, and I'll do a toolbox tour someday. We'll just kind of blow past that for now. Back door, we have a shipping container behind the building here. Um, it matches the building. We keep overstock in there. Our portico units normally go in there in the wintertime, but we haven't got those moved. We've been too busy, I guess. My brother's cart. This rack is his, I suppose, uh, where he does all of his work. Now, these are Amco lifts. Um, not that one over there, but my, my brothers, both of these are Amco 10,000 pound lifts. Um, I added an air hose over here with a regulator for airing up tires. His black toolbox, his workbench, a little cleaner than mine. Um, he's got a computer on his toolbox. This computer is for this guy over here. His, you know, area is a little cleaner than mine as well. Snap on teal, I guess. Um, you can't get that color anymore as far as I know. Uh, older toolbox. The side cabinet was for a slightly newer toolbox and had the wrong height. You know, it didn't quite fit, but that's fine because he can put his, you know, cart underneath there. This is my old cart. It's candy apple red as well. Special ordered that guy. And then this is, this is Bob's Bay. He has the Challenger tall, tall hoist. Um, 10,000 pound, I think as well, maybe 12. Let's see here. Yes, 12,000 pound lift. Um, this is what we put, you know, some of the box trucks and trucks with campers on the back, just so we have that extra height there. Um, we have the, the longer towers installed on the unit. And I guess while I'm staring up at the lights, um, I retrofitted all of these LED lights in here um, with a ballast bypass. They plugged right into the, into the light bases. Um, I don't know. We had a couple, I think half of that one there is out, but really out of the 60 lights or something we installed, I only have two of them that have any burnt out LEDs. And then we have two of these, um, I think they're macro air fans. We got from Napa. Um, they, they help quite a bit to circulate the air. You know, we can push the hot air down. Sometimes all you need is a little bit of bree little breeze in the summertime, um, but we run those with our big port -cool swamp coolers. And we have two more Amco lifts, 10,000 pounds. This is Jason's, ba Jason's Bay, um, his cart and box. Another workbench. This is Patrick's area. He's got the orange toolbox. His area is kind of messy like mine. Um, cart that goes along with it. We have a solvent tank. Doesn't get used a whole lot anymore. Um, I closed the lid on it. Everyone else always leaves the lid open. But I figure we probably evaporate less solvent if the lid's closed. We have brake parts cleaner with the ZEP um, refill station. So this refills all of our canisters. The Hoffman 670XD alignment machine with the stationary tower that is height adjustable, so it goes up and down. Uh, waste oil furnace. We, th this heats the whole shop. Um, we have gas furnaces as well when this one acts up. I was having trouble earlier this year, but got it straightened out. But we have two overhead gas furnaces, but they're kind of expensive to run. Um, but the oil furnace will heat the entire shop, even though we don't have duct work, it'll, it'll make heat go all the way across the shop to that bay. And then the overhead fans help a lot to move it around as well. Our alignment rack, I believe is a 14,000 pound Challenger open front lift. Um, we do have the roller jacks underneath. Let's see, 15,000 pound. Over here we have some service machines. We have brake flush and bleeder, coolant flush, 
transmission flush, differential, um, you know, sucker outer, put her back in, not really a flush. Power steering exchange unit. I like this guy for, you know, if you overfill a transmission a little bit, you can stick that dipstick down there and suck a little bit out. We have our filter cabinets here. Now, I showed you guys our factory, you know, coolant collection. We have factory Toyota, almost every filter that we need. Actually, I think every filter we need because there's a couple of them that you can interchange. We have factory Nissan, two part numbers there. Factory Subaru, we have two part numbers there. Factory Hyundai, factory Honda. And then we have some man filters and some Volkswagen filters um, down here for some, some other stuff. Now we do service a lot of older vehicles. We have a collection of Napa Pro Selects, um, some Napa Gold filters, various part numbers there. And I don't know if it's in this cabinet or not. We keep a factory GM filter for the LS as well. Some Motocraft filters, some more gold filters. A lot of this is diesel stuff. Duramax fuel filters. Various fluids, you know, factory training fluids and power steering and auto track, some synthetics. You know, we, we keep a lot of factory stuff. Uh, not everything needs factory fluid, but a lot of it does need factory fluid and you don't want to mess it up by going with something different. Uh, overstock of filters up there as well as some diesel filters. We have some Schaefer synthetic fluid, some Nissan, probably transmission fluid. Bulk Schaefer. We have some box fluid um, that we had before we got the new tower of oil. Our washer fluid. We keep in bulk nine different oils. Um, we're going to add a, another triple tower that we have you know, over in this area for our green coolant, Dex Cool, and washer fluid. Um, those are the ones we use the most. Um, for our oil, we use, we have 1540 synthetic. We have Dexos 1 approved 530 and 020. We have 530 full synthetic, 520 full synthetic, 520 synthetic blend. Um, you know, that's more of like a, a Ford thing. And then this is newer Ford. We have 530 Euro and 540 Euro um, for the gas and diesel Volkswagen stuff. And I believe we have one box hiding over here of the 0W16 for the new Toyotas. Um, hot tank has a rotisserie in it, pressure nozzles all around. That's what washes most of our parts. We use aluminum safe cleaner. It does a pretty good job. It's not as caustic as the other stuff and doesn't clean as good as the other stuff on steel, but it's still better to, uh, to have the aluminum safe stuff so we can put everything in there. We can run plastics, whatever we need. Um, outside this bay door, I have another alignment or a drive on rack. Um, I'll show you some clips I recorded earlier in the daylight and a walkout door. So we have four of these big 12 by 12 doors. And then that door on the back wall was a little bit smaller. Um, I think that just about covers it. Um, I guess we got a little more over here. We have the bench brake lathe. Uh, we don't use it often, but you know, sometimes you just need a machine, a rotor or a drum, and you can't get one. Sometimes we have customers drop them off, just walk in um, off the street, we'll machine them as long as they're in spec. We have the Pro Cut for on-car machining. We have the bin pack exhaust spinning machine. We have the shop welder here my welder is there plasma cutter um, torch set even though we're in colorado we still use that um, at least once a week and then this is my dad's toolbox and cart this stuff was back there where that other workbench is um, but he moved it out here last week to to work on a vehicle and you know, just to rearrange the shop a little bit. Uh, before someone asks what these things are on the walls, th those are uh, power inverters for our solar system. We have a 10 kilowatt solar system on the roof um, tied to the grid so we can sell back power on the weekends or when we're not using it. Unfortunately, we have a demand meter. So sometimes um, if we have a high demand, if we're running welders and stuff, 
we don't really benefit all that much. Plus, our county decided to start charging us a use tax on our solar panels, so that took away some of the benefit as well. Okay, if you guys have any questions or comments or if I missed something, um, put that down below. Eventually, I'll do a, do a toolbox tour. Um, not sure when. I, I don't watch toolbox tours very often because they make me feel bad because my box isn't that organized and it never will be. And it, even if I organize it, it'll be trashed in a day. But I can do a toolbox tour if you guys really want me to. Um, but that's it for the shop. Questions or comments, put those down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, repair information, diagnostic information, um, scope stuff, then subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.